I don't know, man. I guess if you win both fights, there is no rivalry. So I, I don't know. Thank you for everything, Daniel. Maybe, you know, of course I'm gonna beat myself up and I'm the only one who has to deal with this, me and my family. But uh, I'm all just wondering if, if maybe against the fence when I got under hooks, if I could have tried a little bit harder to get off the fence maybe, you know, but that's just questions that I'm gonna have to live with for the rest of my life. In the pages of the rich and vast history of MMA, there are many moments of all kinds. Recently, we have been telling you about all kinds of successes and triumphs when athletes achieve their goals against all odds. But today, we want to talk about the other side of the sport. In this video, we will tell you about the saddest and most heartbreaking cases in such a beautiful and very cruel sport. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with forwards and subscribe to the channel so you will never miss any upcoming videos. Here we go. Number 5. Alexander Gustafsson. Now I'm very disappointed, you know, it's, it happened again. I lost him, I lost him my, in my own home, but you know what, it's a sport. You know, you, it's hard, you do it. You do it because you love it and, you know, it is what it is, you know. Uh, a lion, Lionheart, Anthony Smith here is a beast, man. You know, he's tough as snails and, a great guy, he's been, every time I see him, he's always been great. He do, he's a true warrior, a true fighter, and uh, a great guy to have in this division. Uh, I just want to thank you all for coming out there tonight and support, and support all, all, of, the, all, all of the fighters here. Uh, so every time uh, the UFC comes, comes back, it's like, you know, it's, it's just uh, every time, every time it's a highlight. It's all, every time amazing to, to be here and to compete and in front of you and hear all the cheers. And and uh, yeah, what can I say? Uh, the show is over, guys. The professional career of the Swedish Mola had all the chances to be one of the greatest in the strongest league and in the sport in general. Alexander Gustafsson's fighting career started in November of 2007. In just five years, the Swedish prospect broke into the UFC. Only in one of his 16 fights he tasted defeat. But it may happen with everyone, as they say, right? By September of 2013, the mauler had gotten into the hearts of the light heavyweight division and stepped in to face the champion in the face of John Jones. I'm super excited. It's a dream fight for me and uh, you know, I'm super motivated. I've never been this motivated in my life, you know, and you know, I, <clears throat> all the hours I put in the gym just for this fight and now this, it's in my reach, so, you know, I, I'm ready to go. John is kind of guy that you never know what to expect, you know, he's an unpredictable guy, he has a belt for a reason, he's pound for pound best guy in the world, so, uh, like I said, I'm going to go in there with an open-minded, I'll be flexible and, you know, I'll be just go in and fight. The Swedish was right. The fight was really a full-fledged one. He gave it his all and even more, but as time showed, it was not enough to win. Contrary to all expectations and opinions, Bones defended the title, a fact that hit Gustafsson hard afterwards. Like, you had like one of the most spectacular fights with John Jones, I mean, down to the wire, like as, as close as it gets. And when you get out of a fight like that where you almost won the title against the greatest of all time, like what is what is that feeling like, and where do you go from there? Uh, I, I, you know, it was tough. It was really tough because, you know, everybody was saying like, "You're winning this fight. You're winning this fight." You had three rounds against him. Like you're winning this fight. Like it, it felt like, and like you said, it was on. It was just, it was just right there at the goal line. I, you know, I didn't really pass that goal line at all. Um, I just felt like that uh, it, it, was tough. it was tough. In January of 2015, the Swedish lost to Anthony Johnson by knockout in his native Stockholm. I felt great coming in here. Uh, I felt great in the, in, like in the couple of few minutes that, was, uh, that we fought and uh, I felt great all the way. And, and he just caught me. I got caught today and, and that's, that's what happened. 
Alexander then lost by decision to Daniel Cormier, but after that, there was a brief glimmer of hope in the form of two wins over Jan Blakovic and Glover Teixeira. Those two victories put the Mauler up for a rematch with John Jones. I'm here to fight, that's it. I'm here to fight. Nothing else. Nothing less. Whatever this guy's saying, it's just bullshit. He's, he's just terrible, man. This guy is terrible, I'm telling you. He is terrible. The stakes were higher than ever. Gustafsson knew his fate would depend on the rematch, but no miracle happened. This time he lost to Bones in an early manner in the third round. I'm disappointed, very disappointed, but uh, it's a sport and it's a fight, so we did our best there in, in the octagon and, and this was the outcome, so I just have to, I just have to take it, take it like a man. After that, once one of the best light heavyweight fighters on the planet added three more premature defeats, and now it looks like this is the final stop in his fighting journey. I'm, fe I'm feeling pretty. I'm feeling that it's it's pretty much a done deal. You know, I'm, if you don't feel that you have it in you anymore, it is what it is. Uh, it's nothing that I'm. I had three title fights. Like I said, it's been a great journey, and uh, this is it. There's not even much to add here. Alexander Gustafsson is a true fighter who gave his best years to the sport, but never achieved his coveted goal. He fought the most competitive fights of all time in title matches, which is even more disappointing because he was one step away from fulfilling his dream. At this stage, it's safe to say the Swedish Viking will never make a great comeback. Sincerely pity the guy. Number 4. Tony Ferguson it's been a long camp, I'll be real. Uh, we've been preparing since November. Uh, obviously, the 18th didn't follow through with Khabib. Obviously, Justin was the only one that wanted to sign on the dotted line. Uh, just a long camp, and then just, you know, not, the weight cut had nothing to do with it. Justin's a tough I'll be real. Um, we prepared for Khabib, not too much of a striker. It happens, man. What can you do, man? But uh, I would have much rather got finished instead of having somebody step in in it. I was still inside of it. Even though I, uh, you know, he stopped, I wish I would have I got finished. Sadly, we can't get past the tragic story of the current generation's main boogeyman. Tony Ferguson's career is a true violent action movie, not just based on a true story with a happy ending. It's a stark reality where El Kukui faced blatant injustice and wasted his best years trying to achieve a title opportunity. The legendary boogeyman has literally terrorized the most competitive division in the strongest fight league for eight years and all he's accomplished in that period is two bouts for the interim championship. It's impossible to fully convey that through words. Just think about it. The man lost his interim championship title after tripping over a cable while being interviewed and getting injured. The big leagues didn't even consider waiting for Tony to recover. They stripped him of his belt right away. Although Robert Whittaker recovered from his injury and didn't lose anything until he faced Adesanya. Ferguson is the only fighter who never fought for a proper UFC gold. This is an outrageous injustice. Nobody spoke up for me to get a title fight. A 12 fight win streak. Here's in the making. What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Step on somebody's toes? Did I speak up for myself? I was so bad, right? None of this is funny to me. After a heartbreaking loss to Highlight, things finally got worse. Ferguson has disbanded his entire team and has aged in months. He lost everything he had, including his skills. Charles Oliveira almost ripped his arm off with an armbar. Benil Dariush nearly broke his leg. Even the infinite cardio left Tony irrevocably. How much can the eyes tell about a person in certain circumstances? During the winner's announcement at UFC 262, you can see the look of utter disappointment on Ferguson's face, not only because of his third loss in a row, primarily because at that moment he fully realized he was no longer able to do what he loves. I'm gonna be real, I'm not gonna say it too much. You know, I mean, Dana said something the other day and I, I put it on, it's on my phone. I think it was MMA Fighting actually reposted it, talking about how boxers are overpaid. I asked Dana to box, he said, F no. I'm like, why? I wanted to go play, you know, I want to go play baseball. I want to go do other pro sports. I'm an athlete. I grew up playing different pro sports or different sports at a very high level. I'm wearing a state championship football ring right here. We were 27 and 1. You know, I come from Grand Valley State University as a wrestler. I want to go do, you know, pro wrestling. You know, I got Brock, Uncle Brock, that's right there watching me. 
I want to go do all these couple things, but then I have this guy right here acting like a fucking drug dealer telling me I can't go and do this shit. I want to go make more money for my family. Tony Ferguson tried his best to keep going. Along with zero respect from the organization, there were many obstacles in his path that he went through as a man. Psychological problems, serious injuries, fight breakdowns, and he still kept at it. He performed at the highest level until he was 36, hoping that after his next win, he would definitely get a title opportunity. But the miracle didn't happen. He is up against a foe that cannot be defeated no matter how hard the man tries. And the name is Age. Last minute replacement. I would have liked a little bit more time, but I'm back, man. Got to fix some mistakes. And uh, I love my crew. So shout out to my wife, our 10 year anniversary. My kid missed his first baseball game. We've got a lot to make up, man. And I'm here. I'm back. The bitter truth is that there's nothing left of the old boogeyman. Literally, Ferguson couldn't even handle the veteran Diaz, who didn't really prepare for his farewell fight in the UFC. I can't even begin to imagine what would have happened if Tony would have fought Li Jingliang. It's very sad that El Kukui's career came to an end on such a sad note. We can only remember some of the best years of Boogeyman's career with nostalgia, but without being too fanatical, and be happy that our time was taken to witness such a great fighter in all his glory. Number 3. Chow Sonnen When my dad died, the, the last thing I ever said to him I said to him, I'm going to beat Tito Ortiz and I'm going to win the world championship. It's the only promise I never. It's the only promise I never kept. We're used to seeing Chow Sonnen as a skilled trash talker, inimitable showman and basically a positive guy who even if he realizes he's not a champion level fighter himself, he'll keep doing his thing over and over again anyway. No matter how many defeats he has in his record, this gangster will go to the octagon next time and show what he can do and back that up with some big ass statements. I'm sure most of you know Chow that way. Man, I'm from the mean streets of Westland, Oregon. You got to look over your back. You don't know what it's like out there. I'll tell you about it someday, but it's rough. I don't know that I'm a self-proclaimed gangster. I'm from the mean streets of West Lynn, Oregon. And I've seen things and been through things that somebody like you in your little pearly loft couldn't even relate to. And if you're asking me to share stories with you that are frankly none of your business, maybe I'll give you a couple and maybe you'll take a little smug look off your face. But I can date back to when I was 11 years old. I'm minding my own business and I'm in a park. This guy, stranger to me, takes a piece of gum out of his pocket, he puts his mouth, and he just throws the wrapper on the ground. There was a police officer standing right there. He didn't do anything. And I saw that. I had to see these things at a young age. Sure, somebody came along, somebody picked it up, somebody threw it in the trash can. But for the few moments where that sat on the ground and the law was violated right here in my neighborhood. But the real Chael Sonnen is completely different. The real Chael Sonnen didn't keep performing because he's a gangster and fighting is his thing. Not because it's cool, not because it paid a lot of money. Long time ago, Chael Sonnen made a promise to someone very close to him that by the end of his professional career, he would be the world champion. He was performing until 2019, until he was 42 years old, and he's been trying to keep his promise till the end. Well, I was on a bit of a championship run. If I, if I beat Leota tonight, I'd have fought Bader for the world championship. And uh, that was the only reason I was in this sport, you know. I promised my father I'd, I'd uh, you know, I was just in the sport. As you may remember, Sonnen was damn close to fulfilling his goal back in 2010, when he almost beat Anderson Silva at UFC 117 but lost in the third minute of the final round. Apparently, it wasn't destined to come true after all. In 2019, Chow was defeated by Lyoto Machida at Bellator 222, and in a post-fight interview, he announced he was ending his career. And I didn't mind losing to him in, in his spots, like you know some of the stuff on our feet and those jumping knees and whatnot, but I did mind losing to him in, in my spots. He was on top of me. He, I didn't think he'd be on top of me. I thought I could have scrambled, I could have got up. 
I used to be tougher. I used to want it more. I used to have more grit. And uh, I just felt like maybe I, I fired my last bullet. I didn't have that same grit. And it's uh, time to move on. Anyway, Chow Sonnen will forever be remembered as one of the best fighters we've ever had, as one of the legendary performers and one of the greatest, if not the greatest, in his own unique style. Number 2. Rory McDonald I don't know, something... Something is just... It's hard to sometimes pull the trigger now, I guess. I don't have that, uh, that killer inside. I don't know, it's, it's really hard to explain, but... I, I, uh, I hesitate a little bit now. I, uh, I don't know what to say. It wasn't, it wasn't my, best, my best performance. Last year, Rory McDonald ended his professional career. In 17 years, he fought over 30 MMA fights. He went down in history as one of the toughest yet strong-willed fighters in the world. In the second fighting league, he even won the world championship. And who knows what would have been the fate of the Red King if not for that very rematch with Robbie Lawler. You mentioned <laughs> another uh, fight that we've all seen as fans. And I knew when I watched him at Bellator that he wasn't the same guy anymore. And that's Rory McDonald. Yeah. And now he's in the PFL looking for answers that aren't there anymore. In July 2015, Rory McDonald faced a ruthless berserk in a rematch. The first time the guys met two years earlier, then Lawler won by split decision. During that time, Robbie managed to become the champion and climb to the top of the welterweight division. Rory, on the other hand, rehabilitated himself three times during this period and claimed a title shot. The legendary encounter took place in the co-main event of UFC 189. I never really felt like I was getting buzzed with any shots. I never felt like he hit me with anything that was messing up my equilibrium or rocking me. It was more just like he was hitting me and was breaking my bones. The guys fought more to the death than to win. They were smashing each other with all their might. There was a lot at stake that night. It was not just a clash of personalities and a test of will, but pure and unvarnished brutality. You know, that, that was um, breaking me mentally. Um, it was like, it was hard to like stay focused, it's hard to stay hungry when someone's breaking you down precisely, pop, pop, pop after, you know, you don't have adrenaline, you don't have gas, things like that. So that's, that's what just at the end just made me, you know, take a knee. I needed time to recover. In fact, the fight ended the careers of both fighters, but Rory McDonald felt the impact of the bout much more. At the age of 25, he went through a real war in the octagon, at the end of which there is only one way out. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's, that's good. You know, Rory, uh, obviously him and the Robbie Lawler fight, you know, pe people will remember that fight forever. That's, that's one of the fights that will go down in history. Um, yeah, I didn't know that, but I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy for him. No, I mean, the, the thing, I always liked Rory. Rory was always a good kid and, uh, um, you know, very quiet and very, he's a, he's a silent killer, man. Uh, tough, durable, just, you know, very, very tough guy. Unfortunately, that's the price to pay for the opportunity to compete at the highest level in the combat sport. And things don't always go according to plan. Not everyone becomes a world champion with lots of money, fans and defenses. The price tag in human health is not for everyone. I felt like I could still have that resurgence in my career. Um, I, I, I had a goal that I, I was driven. To. And I, I know in the practice room, I, can, I, I could do certain things, but I just wasn't able to do it in the cage when it came time, you know, when when rubber meets the road, so, so to speak. And uh, unfortunately, it, 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 there's a difference between what you can do in the practice room and uh, under those lights. And uh, I just, I, I don't have that certain thing, that spirit, that heart to go out there and, and get it done anymore. And every fight for a while now, um, it's been diminishing and I've seen it more and more. I mean, even if, even if I had put up a better fight and lost uh, 
or even if I had won, just the feeling I had in that fight was confirmation to me that I'm, this isn't for me anymore. It's it's not who I am anymore. So I I gotta I gotta listen to number one, Habib Nurmagomedov. My father, not only my coach, this guy, my father, you know. And, uh, you guys can like no understand how I love my father. Let's talk about my father. I like this. Beyond any doubt, however, the saddest moment in modern MMA history is the demise of Habib Nurmagomedov's father. Degestani Eagle is a role model for every sportsman, both from the professional and human points of view. It was he who in his time climbed to the top of the lightweight division and remained an inviolable fortress, which none of the 29 contenders in the entire career in combat sports could not stop. Nurmagomedov raised the bar to the highest level and even now there are few who can match him professionally. But that may not have happened if it were not for a severe discipline and upbringing under the wing of the honoured coach, the legendary Abdulmanab Nurmagomedov. When my father was there, it was much easier. You could feel that energy. You could feel that, I don't know, that kind of, there was a kind of power, an aura. I don't know how to explain it. Even in that fight, when it was against Poirier, that choke, which he wanted me to do, I heard it. Just his voice. Even if it was 10 people shouting, I heard his voice. That's, that's the experience I had. And even I remember when he came to choke me and I thought to myself, he's probably thinking that he's going to choke me or do something else or that I'm going to give up and I've got a father sitting 10 feet away who taught me all my life not to give up and he thinks I'm going to give up. Well, those were the thoughts in my head. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Honestly. I don't know why, why I have so much everything in my life. Like, I don't know, maybe, like, I want to say thank you so much, God, first of all. And then, I have father here, my father. I want to say thank you for my father. Habib has always been inseparable from his father. Nurmagomedov Sr. was a reliable support and unbreakable wall for his son in professional sports. After each fight, the first thing the kid did was to call his father and ask his opinion about his performance. Even when he was training at the AKA, Eagle kept in touch with him daily via messenger when he asked for advice on performance during training camps. It's like I told you guys, when I go to the cage with my father, I feel I go to the cage with the lion, you know. This happened on July the 3rd, 2020. Nurmagomedov Sr. suffered a heart attack brought on by coronavirus infection. Uh, a lot of things motivate me. It was a very hard year for me. And uh, right now I already make weight. I just have to be focused tomorrow night and that's it. Don't lose my focus and uh, beat this guy. Be here and uh, for me it's big motivation because when what happened with my father last four months ago, four and a half months ago, I really don't know I want to fight or no. But right now I'm here, I finish my camp, I make weight and tomorrow night I have great opponent to improve my legacy one more step. This event became a pivotal moment in Habib's career. After all, who knows how the fate of the lightweight would have turned out if not for the untimely passing of his father. Today, I want to say, this it was my last fight. And no way I'm going to come here without my father. It was first time when... After what happened with my father, when UFC called me about Justin, I talked with my father, my mother, three days. She don't want to go fight without father, but I promise her it's going to be my last fight. And if I give my word, I have to follow this. As history has shown, Eagles' fight at UFC 254 was a farewell fight. After what happened, Nurmagomedov realized that he could not go on this road without the main guide who directed him all his life and who brought him into this industry. The invisible and incredibly strong, even deep connection was abruptly severed. The death of the legendary Abdulmanab Nurmagomedov is certainly a huge tragedy, not just for one family, but for the entire fighting world. The man built a great legacy and raised a huge number of great athletes. He contributed a lot to the development of martial arts 
and proved by his own example that discipline and hard work is the key to a right and successful life. Write in the comments your opinion about the video. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you do not want to miss new videos and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And that's all friends, see you soon.